Chemistry lecture number 99, change in enthalpy. All substances are made of atoms, and atoms stick to each other and form bonds. Uh, the bonds between atoms contain energy. The bonds between atoms are like springs. If the spring is compressed, the energy is stored in the spring. If the spring is broken, it uncoils and releases energy. It takes energy to push atoms together to form bonds. In a sense, the bond or spring between the two atoms is being compressed and energy is stored in the bond or the spring. So here's an example. We have two hydrogen atoms being compressed together and a bond forms between them. And we're saying that the bond is analogous to a spring. So when you compress and push the atoms closer and closer together, the spring or the bond between them begins to compress and energy is stored in the bond in the same way that energy is stored in a spring if you were to compress it. Now, if the bond or spring between atoms is broken, energy is released uh, from the bond or the spring. And the released energy pushes the atoms, which causes the atoms to move faster. The atoms now have more kinetic energy. Thus, the stored energy has been converted to kinetic energy. So, if you break the bond between two atoms, uh, energy is released from the bond, and this energy gets transferred to the atoms, and then the atoms uh, move faster. In a chemical reaction between substances, old bonds break between atoms, which release energy. New bonds are then formed, which stores energy. If the energy released in a chemical reaction is greater than the energy that is absorbed, we have an exothermic reaction. We can detect an exothermic reaction if the substances involved in the reaction become warmer. If the energy absorbed in a chemical reaction is greater than the energy that is released, we have an endothermic reaction. We can detect an endothermic reaction if the substances involved in the reaction become cooler. One example of an exothermic reaction is the combustion of propane, C3H8, to form carbon dioxide and water. This reaction releases 2,219 kilojoules of energy per mole of CH3H8 consumed. So here's the reaction. Propane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And then one of the products of reaction is energy. Now instead of writing 2,219 kilojoules as a product, we write Delta H equals negative 22, oops, that's supposed to be a 19, sorry about that, 19 kilojoules off to the right. So you write the equation and then you write Delta H equals the energy gained or lost. Let me raise this up just so. Delta H is the change in enthalpy, and this is the energy absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. The negative sign in front of the 2,219 kilojoules means that the reaction loses or releases energy, making it an exothermic reaction. And now let's take a look at an endothermic reaction. SiH4 can be made from silicon, hydrogen, and energy. So if you take solid silicon and react it with hydrogen gas and add some energy to it, you'll end up with silicon uh, tetrahydride. Uh, now notice that the 34 kilojoules of energy was added or absorbed by silicon and hydrogen, making this an endothermic reaction. See, the 34 kilojoules of energy is on the left side of the arrow, so it means it's being added here. All right, but instead of adding 34 kilojoules to the left side of the equation, we write delta H equals 34 kilojoules off to the right of the equation. So again, we just write the equation and then off to the side we write delta H equals 34 kilojoules. So this indicates that uh, that amount of energy has been absorbed in the reaction. So I'm going to rewrite this on the next page. <clears throat> So since the value of delta H, 34 kilojoules, is a positive number, it means that the reaction absorbs energy. So the positive, this being a positive number, means that this energy is being added here on the left side. 
So the enthalpy of the reaction is positive, meaning that the reaction is endothermic. And can we ever know the absolute amount of energy that exists in a bond? Suppose we have an oxygen molecule which consists of two oxygen atoms attached to each other with a double bond. How much energy is in the bond? So here's an oxygen molecule, two oxygen atoms bonded by a double bond. So how much energy is stored in this bond between the oxygen atoms? Well, the answer is that we'll never know the total amount of energy in the bond. And we can measure the energy that goes into it and the energy that comes out of it, but we'll never know the absolute amount of energy inside the bond. And this is true for all molecules. We just don't know how much total energy is stored in the bonds between atoms in a compound. And the best we can do is measure the change in energy, delta H, that occurs in a chemical reaction. If a compound is formed from elements under the standard state, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, uh, delta H is given a special name, heat or enthalpy of formation. And the zero, this little zero up here, above the H means that the reaction is occurring at the standard state. Now note, standard state and standard temperature and pressure are not the same. At standard temperature and pressure, uh, the temperature is zero degrees. At standard state, the temperature is 25 degrees. Okay, so, for example, when solid carbon reacts with oxygen under standard states to form carbon dioxide, energy is released. So, carbon, which is an element, combines with oxygen, which is an element to form a compound. So, anytime you have elements combining to form a compound, this delta H is a special type of delta H. It's the heat of formation, or enthalpy of formation. All right. So, in this example, uh, when one mole of carbon dioxide is formed from elements, 395 kilojoules of energy is released. All right. So <clears throat> anytime you have a reaction where elements combine to form compounds, it's delta H F, okay? heat of formation. And the zero indicates that uh, it's occurring under standard state conditions. Now, what would be the heat of formation for an oxygen molecule? Well, chemists arbitrarily set the heat of formation for elements in the standard state as zero. And thus, when oxygen atoms form, <coughs> excuse me, when oxygen atoms form oxygen molecules, um, heat of formation is zero. And likewise, for all other elements in molecular form, such as sulfur, hydrogen, and chlorine, uh, they have a heat of formation equal to zero. All right. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture Number 99: Change in Enthalpy.